The haptic eye part two, tactile visions, focuses on the nature of optical stimulation and the effects of optical stimulation that lead to uh, visual abstraction. In, uh, in other words, how the imagination generates a sense of touch in relation to purely visual stimulation. Whereas the haptic eye part one, eyes of the skin, focused on materials and objects that might relate in some way to the body, Tactile Visions chooses to express wider sensory experiences of eye and mind. As with eyes of the skin, the emphasis continues to stress haptic qualities, such as malleable and pliable presence. But at the same time, they are inflected towards ocular feelings of touch or as sensory abstraction, experiences that we might well call an expansion of the em empathetic gaze. An emphasis is placed on the variability of image and viewing subjectivity of contents, bringing together image materials and cultural sources and histories that might not otherwise be commonly brought into immediate juxtaposition. The interaction between the ethnic variables is made to increase an awareness of each work's capacities to create a differently experienced haptic sense in the viewer. The pictorial causality of affect may vary from the purely coloristic aspects and intensities to specific details that suggest other intellectual or pictorial invocations. So we have an enormous diversity of source material in this exhibition, but what they all share is this ability to, as it were, ch create charged affect, an emotional engagement with their work. I think it's important to stress uh, within uh, tactile visions the idea of effect that leads to affect. Effect is a cause, but affect is a consequence. And in that sense, uh, one's emotional life, is, as the eye and the mind is charged, one is led into all sorts of emotional avenues, which is the affective experience. And that element is, uh, underpins the motive behind the second exhibition. And I think one should finish here by thinking of a quote by Gaston Bachelard talking about this experience when he says, Imagination is always seen to be the faculty of forming images, but it is rather the faculty of deforming the images offered by perception, of freeing ourselves from the immediate images. It is especially the faculty of changing images. If there is no changing of images, an unexpected union of images, there is no imagination, no imaginative action.